And now to our final event and the reason we're all here. The prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award is presented by the Kansas CCIM chapter and the WSU Center for Real Estate to an individual or individuals who represent outstanding service to the commercial real estate industry. Their community and their colleagues are all beneficia beneficiaries of their hard work. The recipients of this award are the real movers and shakers, the men and women who through their hard work and leadership have played a key role in shaping our industry. At this time, I'd like to welcome Steve Clark, our Kansas CCIM's 2010 Lifetime Achievement Award honoree who will introduce this year's recipient. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Kirsten. Well, it's nice to be here among friends and uh, to honor someone with, that we all have the greatest respect for. You know, uh, many years ago when Stan's resume came through, we were a little concerned, though. Stan being a, an economist up in Cleveland at the Federal Reserve, you know, and what they say about economists, they don't have enough, a good enough personality to be a, an accountant. So. <laughs> <clears throat> but luckily, that, that didn't happen. So but my guess is many of you do not know the history of the real estate program here at Wichita State. So I'd like to just take a couple of minutes and, and talk about that, if you don't mind. Um, and it's just shy of 50 years in existence, by the way. So time, time goes by, doesn't it? It's amazing. You know, a lot of the credit for this program goes to a guy named John Arnold, John T. Arnold and Associates. Many of you may not know John or have known John, but uh, John uh, was passionate about this, and unfortunately, John passed away in 2004. And uh, in the early uh, <clears throat> 1970s, John and I were both active in the local real estate uh, board, and uh, we both had a passion for real estate education. Um, we talked at length about uh, how unfortunate it was that most of the universities didn't even recognize real estate in their curriculum. So uh, the gold standard at that time, by the way, was the grass camp program at the University of Wisconsin. And um, our goal was to create a program here at Wichita State that would rival that program. Uh, we spent, John and I spent many hours driving the state trying to generate support for the program, and uh, the university was very interested, but of course, funding's always the problem. <laughs> right, President Boma? <laughs> so um, it seemed like an eternity, but we were able to raise the initial funding. Um, the Hutchinson Real Estate Board, Topeka, Johnson County was uh, very supportive of this program, and, uh, but most of the support came right out of here in Wichita, and the Wichita Real Estate Board, thank you. Um, but there were also many uh, generous donors, individual donors, like uh, the Bastion Foundation, uh, the Wygans, uh, Colby Sandlin. And uh, Colby, by the way, happy birthday. Tomorrow is Colby's birthday. Uh, I've known Colby for many years, and I don't think he's figured out what he wants to be when he grows up yet. But <laughs> finally, in 1975, success. We had four courses here at the university in real estate. Uh, 1977 or thereabouts, Dr. Graham can correct me. <laughs> uh, real estate recognized as a major, and I think there, shortly thereafter, a graduate program. Lynn Woodward with the Grass Camp or out of the Grass Camp program was heading the program at that time here. Woodward left in 1981. Uh, Dr. Don Levi took over the program. The program flourished for a number of years, but um, I could tell things were changing and for some reason Don took his, uh, uh, he didn't have the focus that he did previously. So then in 1993 or 1994 thereabouts, we lost the major in real estate under a cost-cutting uh, issue with the state, and that was under President uh, Gene Hughes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, many of us who had spent a lot of time on this, and donors and volunteers, 
uh, weren't informed about that for a, quite a number of months, and, but uh, that's what happened. Don Levi left the program in 1997, and uh, unfortunately about that time we lost a real rising star as well, uh, Mark Dotzer, who went to Texas A&M and made a rep national reputation for himself. But in 1999, uh, we finally found the right fit for the program, and we were extremely fortunate to find someone with Stan's character and work ethic to lead the program. And uh, we thank Dr. Graham for making that happen, Dr. Gerald Graham, the dean of the business school at that time. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I recall discussions about the candidates back at that time, and uh, somebody said, you know, Stan is a hometown boy, uh, so if he comes back, why, we'll probably add a lot of stability to the program. And uh, now some 22 years later, when you read Stan's resume, uh, it's obvious that Stan didn't meet our expectations. <laughs> he far exceeded them. Uh, over 4,000 students have taken his real estate classes, uh, and we have almost 300 real estate graduates in the program. Stan's insight into market conditions is widely quoted. Uh, he founded the Center for Real Estate, and he authors the highly popular statewide publication, the uh, Kansas Housing Markets Forecast. He's uh, nationally known and, and respected nationally as well. Publications such as Forbes, USA Today, the Economist and others have quoted Stan. He's also an op-ed columnist for the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal. Uh, he publishes numerous articles on financial articles and real estate articles in a variety of leading academic journals, as well as articles in publications like Cato, Business Daily, and the Commercial Investment Real Estate Magazine. Students praise Stan highly his, for his teaching and uh, expertise. Uh, not too many people get excited about boring uh, financial calculations, but uh, Troy Mullinger said he's never seen anybody get so excited about internal rate of return and present value as Stan <laughs> Long offer. Steve Martin said, uh, and I don't think Steve was able to be here today, he said Stan is a has been a tireless champion for the industry and WSU and his students. Curtis Gibson, a former student, said that Stan's his favorite professor, fellow church member, Bible study leader, and career and life mentor. The industry has uh, greatly benefited from your uh, leadership, Stan, and you've taken the program to a whole nother level, so we appreciate that very much. Uh, you've definitely left your mark both personally and professionally, on the hearts and minds of your students and uh, the thousands that have attended your classes. And I want to thank you personally for your dedication to the program and what you've accomplished here at Wichita State. And I want to thank also all of you out there. Many, many of you have uh, supported this program and uh, allowed it to be what it is today. Uh, I could name many of you, uh, Craig Burns, Craig, thank you, uh, Dan Unruh, and uh, Dave Lewis, and uh, President Muma, thank you for your support of this program as well. appreciate that. So congratulations, Stan. I don't uh, think there could anybody be any more deserving. We appreciate, uh, appreciate you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Um, a lot of you know I, I give a lot of presentations, I give a lot of speeches, and I usually just kind of wing it. Um, I'm pretty comfortable. I, I'm not comfortable doing that, and uh, I usually am not very nervous, but I'm kind of nervous today. I'm also my mother's son, and so that means I do have Kleenex with me, <laughs> just in case. Um, 
I, uh, I have to, before I begin, just say a special thanks to my family that's here. My wife, Julie, my daughter, Nina, my son, Zach, and my beautiful daughter in love, Holly, Josh and Aileen Cumston, Trevor Cumston, Katie and Richard Sandifer, thank you all so much for being here. And of course, my brother, Kirk, my aunt, Helene, and who could not be with us today. We lost last year my father. So, well, we'll get through this. <laughs> um, every year in September, we get together to select the annual Lifetime Achievement Award recipient. And I've, I've always been a part of that committee. It was an idea that Rod Stewart had to create this award. And, and when he created it, I said, that's wonderful. We'd love to be a part of that and do that as a partnership with the, with the university. And so we got together and we met. And for whatever reason, signals got crossed. And Daryl Krotz, uh, you, I, I think he was late. He had the wrong time. And so we met for about a half an hour. And we talked through different uh, candidates, some really, really amazing names, some people who've done remarkable things. And Daryl showed up, and, and all of a sudden, Will Harmon says, well, OK, I think we have a nominee then. All those in favor, say aye. And I'm sitting there looking around and going, what on earth are you talking? I mean, yeah, I think we had a couple that we were maybe coalescing on, but, but I, which one are we voting on? And then they all just kind of look at me and smile, and they had uh, gotten together separate from me, and they had done this. And so I was, I, it was something that I really never, never imagined uh, might happen. Uh, so my first thought was, well, I'm too young. Um, I, you know, I can't. You can't get a Lifetime Achievement Award when you're still in your 50s. But then I thought about it, and I, I kind of counted it up, and I figured out uh, George Laham, he couldn't be with us today. He's in Lebanon right now. Uh, but George was my same age, I think technically one month older when he received this award. Um, but then I went looking, and Paul, it turns out you're younger than I am by about three months. And so I figured if the two of them could receive the award at the age of 54 or younger, then, then I can do that. Um, but more importantly, I said, I don't, I don't deserve this recognition. Um, the past recipients of this award, I, I'm not a real estate guy the way all of these people are. Colby, Jack, George Ablaw, Jack DeBoer, Nestor and Michael Wigand, Steve Clark, um, Herb Krumzik, David Burke, Rod Stewart, Don Slauson, Daryl Leeson, Phil Ruffin. George Laham, Steve Martins, Paul Jackson, these are all people who have done something in the industry, really big things. And as my dad used to say, those who can, do. <laughs> those who can't, teach. <laughs> and then because he was a longtime high school administrator, he said, those who can't teach, administrate. <laughs> so jo that's right, Josh, right? No. <laughs> but my wife often pointed out to me after we came here that I was a real estate guy long before I even knew it. When we were dating, she would put up with me. I, why did you put up with me? We would drive around town and I would point out, you know, lots that had been vacant for a while. Why isn't that somebody doing something there? What's happening? Or, oh, there's this new development here. That used to be a this. And how did that change? And, I've always been fascinated with that. And in some ways, I think like many of you in this room, you were a real estate person before you ever knew you were a real estate person. You just had to find what that passion was that matched where you already had it. And so I was in Cleveland in 1997 working at the Federal Reserve. I was a financial economist. I was doing work in uh, bankruptcy, financial contracting, but also doing a lot of work in housing finance, mortgage discrimination, and so forth. And, you know, we always had it. We loved Cleveland. It was a great city, a great place to be, but we always had a desire to get closer to home. And I thought maybe a state or two would be closer to home. 
And I saw one time that there was a position open in the finance department in 1997. And I actually gave Rick a call. Rick LeCompte was the department chair at the time. And talked to him a little bit about it and kind of discovered things. And, and quite frankly, the pay was squat. <laughs> <laughs> And there just was no way that I was going to be able to do that. And so I said, oh, well, no problem. We can, we can pass on. I had a great job in Cleveland, and, and that was fine. Um, but um, a year later, Rick reached out to me, and he called, and he said, you know, hey, that finance pitch didn't work, but it turns out we have a chair in real estate that you might be a really good fit for. And I told my wife about it. I remember we were driving down there in, on uh, Cedar Road in, in, in Cleveland Heights. And I, and I said, you know, one, I, I suppose we don't have anything to lose. I mean, one of two things is going to happen. Either I, it just won't be a good fit and we won't take it, or they'll realize that I'm not really a real estate person. And they'll say, well, never mind. Um, but after my interview and, and my campus visit, it took over a year for an offer to come. I keep reminding my son of that. Things don't happen immediately. It takes time for these things to work out. And when the offer did finally came, come, Gerald Graham, you know, you, you butter people up, you do things, but you beat me down to my absolute last bottom dollar. I mean, it would have <laughs> 30 cents less and I would not be standing here today. Um, as a side note, some of you may know, I don't, I don't think many of you do. Um, you know, I, I, again, I was looking and, and I had uh, been talking with the folks at University of Iowa because they had an opening in finance and it, that wasn't working. And two days after I had verbally accepted the offer, I was still waiting on the letter, but I had said yes to Gerald. And I got a call from Mike Stutzer at the University of Iowa, their finance department, uh, their chairperson who ran the real estate side of their program had just stepped down and they needed somebody real estate to start the next year. And he called me and said, we'd like to have you come out for a campus visit next week. And I was overwhelmed. Um, you know, a finance position at a Big Ten university is a big, big step up. Um, professionally, that would have been a, an amazing thing from an academic perspective. but. As flattered as I was, by the way, it would have paid a lot more. <laughs> um, as, as flattered as I was, I'd made a commitment. You know, I set my, to me, when you accept a verbal offer, that's as good as a signed contract. And so it was flattering. It was nice to have your ego stroked that way to say they want you. Um, but I was going home, and that was good. And so somehow I've got two pages of each of these things. My printer was acting weird, but hey, as long as the right pages are here, we're good. Um, so when I got the offer letter, it made it really explicit and clear that my job was twofold. Beyond the things of a normal professor of teaching and research and your service and those things, I had two charges, mandates in my offer letter. Number one was to rebuild the real estate program, which had essentially gone dormant in the two years after Don Levi and Mark Dotzer had left. And the number two, and very clear to me the most important, was to rekindle the relationships with the professional real estate community. Well, all of you made that second charge really easy. I don't think I'd been here for two weeks when Rod Stewart called me up and asked if I wanted to serve on the Kansas CCIM chapter board. All of the other professional associations here in town were so wonderful and inviting. Uh, Institute of Real Estate Management. I remember going to a Christmas party they had and it was a back to Oz thing and everybody was dressed up in, in their favorite Wizard of Oz characters. You would have loved it, Larissa. You, she, Larissa has a fantastic Dorothy costume that she had her first thanks, first holiday, uh, Halloween, uh, Halloween here. Um, BOMA, Appraisal Institute, Wichita Area Builders Association, the Realtors Associations, everybody was so welcoming and so encouraging. It was just so happy to have me here. And not only were you happy for me, but you really, really wanted our students. Um, you wanted to share um, your profession, 
you, and what you do with young people that might catch the vision of what it's like and how central real estate is in all of our lives. And so you've always been willing to welcome my students to your events and been willing to engage them one-on-one -on -one and mentor and encourage them. And now I've fallen behind in my slide deck here, so let me uh, kind of catch up with where I am. Um, I, always, I always tell students, there's something really unique in this city. Not every real estate program has what we have. Um, we have genuine world-class players in real estate, people that pe around the country, around the world, you go and you tell them that you're from Wichita, they ask, hey, do you know Herb Krumzik? Do you know, uh, did you know Jack DeBoer? Did you know George Abloh? These people are, are, are really incredible. And, but what's different about that is not just that those people are here, but that our students have access to all of you. Um, George Laham, I said he couldn't be here today, but one of my favorite stories and one that I regularly tell, uh, when, again, to prospective students. I had a student that was, a group of students that was in our real estate development class. And every year with that development class, they are supposed to prepare a proposal for a parcel of land here in Wichita. What would you do with it? Show the demographics, show the, the market demand for it, show what you would do, the design and so forth. And we encourage our students to reach out to all of you and one of them called George Laham at his office. And George said, you know, no, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I'm, I'm busy this morning. Um, how many people are there in your group? Four? OK. I'll tell you what, can you come by my house Saturday morning, 9.30? I'll make you breakfast, and we can talk about your project. That doesn't happen in Chicago or Dallas or even up in Kansas City, where students get to spend time. There are other stories like that as well. Herb, I can't tell you how many students have told me that you know, they've called you to just seek your advice and mentorship. And then they're so fascinated by the way that you walk in the back door over at Larkspur and they, get, and they take you to your own table and you can share that. They, they know this because they've done it. John Beckman, where are you in the room? He just spent, took a student and took him into every single section of the mortgage lending department over at Meritrust. And, and he just had this tremendous experience. Mike Diod, are you here somewhere? Um, you, you are, you're, you're mentoring, you're taking on one of my students here in just a few weeks. This, this, these aren't isolated incidents. They happens again and again and again. And like I said, students in real estate programs and other, state, other programs in the country, they don't get this. This is something that you all do that's unique. So I've been really blessed it's been so easy for me to rekindle those relationships with the real estate community. The embers were already there. All I had to do was add a couple logs to the fire and stoke it a little bit. But at the end of the day, this Lifetime Achievement Award isn't really about me or anything that I've done. It, when it comes down to it, my job is to plant trees. I take these small seedlings of all of you with something that you're thinking about. Sorry for this interruption in the program. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. I take these seedlings and I plant them and I water them and I, I, I set them off and help them grow and all of you help them grow as well. Anyway, but I, have, I get so much out of it. I have so many special memories of the students, many of you who are in this room. And I wanna share just a few. And these are just a few because there are so many more that I could give. But Jeff Englert, uh, Jeff, was my very first graduate from the real estate program here at Wichita State when I came in. And uh, he walked in, showed up in my office again a couple weeks after he arrived, and he said, uh, I want to get into the real estate business like my Uncle Ross. Right? And for those of you who don't know, uh, Ross Way is his uncle. 
And uh, he said, I hear you're in charge of the real estate program, so what do I need to do? And, and he, I think, Jeff, I think you took every real estate class that I offered uh, during your time here at Wichita State. And uh, when he was in my, I, first time I taught urban land development, he, he took that class with me and he prepared a proposal. You remember your proposal, Jeff? Shocker Village, where are you, Jeff? There you are, Shocker Village just south of 17th Street over there. It's only taken 20 years for the university to catch up to your vision. And I still think you ought to put in a request for proposal. You ought to put in a bid for that and, and do something with the old Brennan Hall property there. Um, yeah, that was, and I think he talked to you, Steve, about that and, and came and, and, and spent time to, to think out that project. Um, but as a side note, thank you, Jeff, for that wonderful picture. Um, when I asked students if they would give me pictures of them now and as a student, I promised them that I would include a picture of myself from college so that it wouldn't be too overwhelmingly embarrassing, although that one of me when I first arrived isn't such a, that's, that's pretty amusing as well. Uh, but here's, uh, here's my wife, Julie, and I, our freshman year. I think this would have been the fall of 1985 when we first started dating. Julie, you're just as sexy today as you were when you were 18. But what on earth happened to all my hair? So, well, Jeff was my first graduate of the program, but he does not take the honor of being my first student that I had in class. My very first semester in class, Joe, uh, Jeremy Hurt, he and Joe Hand were fraternity brothers, and they took my principles of real estate class together. Jeremy, are you here today? Yeah, Jeremy, I, what on earth possessed you to take a, this class that had nothing, no requirement for your major, just a general elective to fill out something from a professor that had no reputation at the university? You guys were nuts. Never, you know better than that. But he came and he got really fascinated. And I think Steve Martins came and did some presentation and you started out as an appraisal assistant with them. You went straight into the brokerage assistant. Went straight into the brokerage assistant position and then became a full-time commission agent and has moved on, spent time working with Steve and now works with Dave Murfin and does tremendous things here in the community. He's still a little slow though. <laughs> And then in the fall 2020, 2002, uh, 2000 semester, I, I get into 2020 so easily there, I had what looked like just this little 12-year-old boy in my class. <laughs> Grant Glasgow was so wide-eyed and excited, and you could just tell, Grant, you did not have any background, any family background in real estate, did you? So many students that we have, it's like they come to real estate because they know and they, they, they know somebody, and all of you are my best recruitment tool, by the way. You know, tell all your students, this is the only place in Kansas you can go to get a real estate degree. So uh, keep sending us your students. But, but Grant was one that we found on our own. And um, he just, he, he caught the bug. He was so excited. And once again, he started um, out as that appraisal assistant. Steve Martins does such a great job of having this path to nurture students into the industry. Um, and I just, I, I never would have guessed that that wide-eyed little kid would become one of the most smooth and professional, even-keeled brokers in the industry. So it's, it's just so, been so much fun to watch you grow. Christy Royce, I think I saw you over there. Where are you, Christy? Yeah. You have a very special place in my heart, and I don't know if you really appreciate it or know that. Um, she was in my class um, one semester, fall semester. I had two classes back to back that, that year. I had an eight o'clock class, I was teaching my investments class, and then 9.30 in the same room, I was teaching principles of real estate. And Christy was in that 9.30 class. And one day, about four or five weeks into class, she walks in and she says, did you hear what just happened? And I go, no, what? And for those of you who don't know, that was September, 11th, and that makes a connection. All of us know where we were on September 11th, but where it really 
connected for me was Julie and I were having in a class, a 9.30 a.m. class over in uh, what is now Lindquist Hall, taking a class from Anthony Gathiel. Any of you remember Anthony Gathiel? He was a professor in the English department and then moved over into history. Wonderful, caring man. I'm sorry? No, he was in English and then he moved into history. Um, so, uh-oh, I'll pay for that later, right? Um, we were walking into his class one day when another student came in and say, hey, did you hear what happened? And that was the morning of the Challenger disaster. Our class was called Origins of Western Literary Tradition, and it was all about mostly Greek um, literature. And from, from Anthony Gathiel's perspective, it was about hubris. It was about stories, and then they applied to us and our lives. What happens when you go too far? I, I can't do his accent, but uh, Professor Gathiel was so moved the hubris that we thought we could just do anything and that it was no big deal to send, was she an elementary school teacher? An elementary school teacher into space. And I only hope that I have the same kind of compassion and, and a sense of of, of what it means to be a human being when I teach my classes that I got from Anthony, because he was a wonderful man. So, of course, all of you know what happened with Christy. She came to become one of the top commercial brokers here in Wichita and worked, I think, with Lisa Lowry to start, and then um, she does amazing work. So Chris Wessel, um, wow. Uh, I'll never forget the first day I met Chris. We used to do, for the Barton Scholarship Competition, we used to have this session where students would come in and their parents and they would have to sit there and all the department chairs would stand up and they'd talk about and try and do a little sales pitch to their, to their, for their programs. And uh, man, that just had to be torture. <laughs> um, you know, it's like, Ah, I don't care, we've had a long day, I'm tired, whatever. Well, afterwards, I did my little pitch for the real estate program. I'm always out there trying to push the real estate program. And, uh, and afterwards, Jeff comes up to me and he goes, that sounds so cool, tell me more about it. And so we talked with him and he was hooked from that day and he started taking the classes. I think this is a really great picture that he sent. You can see there, for those of you who don't know, Chris was a Fran Jabara scholar. And so there he is with Fran Jabara and, and those of you from Wichita State, look how young Dean Beeler is there. So, um, in 2013, a young lady come in, came into my office looking for advice. Her father had sent uh, me, her to me. I think she'd been at University of Denver, Kansas State, KU. Kara, if I remember right, weren't you, hadn't you been a, on a volleyball scholarship at one point? So she still, is she here today? I thought she was on the list. Um, well, her dad, Steve Wheeler, uh, had said, why don't you go and talk? And she was finally thinking of maybe uh, getting involved in the family business. And so she, and we talked, she became excited. It was like, I can see this, this sounds really excited. And Kara came and she graduated from our program. But I didn't learn until a lot later that my family has a real personal connection with her family and, and the family business. My grandfather, Stanley Davis, worked for Wheeler Kelly Hagney until he left in World War II. He served on the USS Indianapolis. And for those who don't know, the Indianapolis was the last ship that was sunk at the end of World War II. I was named after him. My ma, you want one of my Kleenex? <laughs> <laughs> I should have warned my mom. Many of you knew Urban Denker and knew him as one of the real greats of the real estate community in town. We have a scholarship here named for Urban Denker. My mom knew Urban Denker as the man who came every year and brought her family 
a turkey for Christmas and gifts to her and her sister because of the love that they had for her father for all the years that he'd worked with them. And money for 4th of July. <laughs> so, you know, that's the same kind of compassion. I don't, I don't think it's unique to Wheeler Kelly Hagney. So many of you, the people that work with you, the people that are with you, you care about, you love them, even when they're gone. And so that's just a few of the trees that I've helped to plant. But there are lots of others, many I've failed to mention. Angela Adams, Timber Lee, uh, uh, I've lost my pages here now, uh, Nathan Farha, Curtis Gibson, Krista Lowry, Andy Boyd, uh, Kyle Henning, John Potochnik, and there's a, new, um, there's a new generation that's coming up as well. Samantha Richardson, Fred Elmer, Lindsay Unruh, Carlos Wu, Levi Eisman, Ryan Hubbard, Henry Liu, Alex Zabara. I could name so many, many, many more. Um, and I haven't even begun to touch on all the students that are working in the residential side of the business or who have moved on to a different career. They're not in real estate, but they benefited from the fact that we've got real estate as a degree and that they're able to use that and advance their careers elsewhere. But of course, I didn't do it alone. Um, this is the people that have just helped teach in the real estate program just since I've come. And many of you sitting in this room have taught with us. And that engagement, it goes both ways. And so you've been a part of this. And so you've helped plant and nurture these trees. But I thought it'd be really interesting to see what this, these trees and these individual trees and what they'd look like as a forest. I asked my students to send me a list of all the transactions that they've done here in the Wichita area. And this is only a partial list because I was only able to get through to a few of you. This is what it looks like in Kansas. And this one I know is too limited for the United States as a whole because I've got students that are working in Chicago and Detroit and in Dallas and other cities that I wasn't able to reach out to who are working as practicing commercial professionals in those cities. The impact has been really amazing. And again, it's not me. It's all of you and what you've done. So it's exciting. A few years ago, Steve Martins and Tom Johnson announced that Jeff Englert, Nathan Farha, Grant Glasgow and Chris Wessel were going to become the majority owners of NAI Martins. And that has to have been my proudest moment of my tenure here at Wichita State. To see my former students become the new generations of leaders in the commercial real estate industry. And so as I said, this, isn't, this award really isn't about me. It's about all of you and what all of you have accomplished. And the thought that I might have played a very small role in helping you along this path is deeply gratifying. It's my reward for being faithful and serving in one place for a long time. I think, I hope, that I've made a difference in your lives. And this award tells me maybe just maybe, just maybe I have. I'd like to close out, I, I heard an interview this week, and for those who don't know, this is Tim Kirchin. Tim Kirchin is a, uh, a baseball writer, and just this year he, oops, I moved forward too fast, go back. Um, he, he, re he received the Baseball Writers Association of America's Career Excellence Award. And because of this, he's actually going to be included in an exhibit in the Baseball Hall of Fame. And in the interview that I was listening to, Kirchin mentioned, you, you probably heard it too, didn't you? Yep. Kirchin mentioned, he said, the day after he received the award, Johnny Bench called him and said, welcome to the club. You're one of us now. And Kirchin went on, he said, as you know, I'm not one of them. There's a huge difference between being a Hall of Fame player 
and a writer who's a part of an exhibit in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> There's a gigantic difference. Don't think I don't know this. But the greatest catcher of all kind just called me and said that to me, and I started to cry again. So he cried too. So, um, I think I understand how Kirchin feels. I'm not a Hall of Fame commercial real estate professional, but all of you who do and accomplish so much in this industry have told me that I belong. I love this industry and I love all of you. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your club. Congratulations, Stan. You've had an incredible impact on our industry, and it's just incredible what you've been able to do, and we're all so grateful to have you here. So thank you for being a part of our community and, and for Kansas C CCIM as well. So now we've come to the point in the ceremony where we officially bestow the award on the honoree. Traditionally, this has been Stan's job, but... <laughs> I guess I'll have to take it on today. So uh, Larissa, would you like to join me and represent WSU um, as we present the award? So. It's now my pleasure and honor to formally present you Stan Longhofer, the 2021 Kansas CCIM chapter in WSU Center for Real Estate Lifetime Achievement Award for the commercial real estate industry impact you've made here in Wichita. Thank you so much. Congratulations. <laughs> 